Good morning and welcome to Julie Hall Designs. Just give me a second to make sure everything's coming up roses and okay had to find the right buttons. It has been a long month. Good morning to the lovely Louise who is right. here. I'm sure we will show her face um, as we get going, but I don't want to disturb the cameras because I've just kind of got them working. Let me make sure that I can also hear. Can somebody just send me a message if they can hear everything clearly? That would be very, very handy and then we are ready to rock and roll i hope you are all having a fantastic week sorry i'm just getting back into the idea of where all of the different things are okay kathy odekirkens watching thank you for joining us kathy um so as always i am julie hall and i am back home i had a lovely holiday with my darling husband Although by the end of it, we just looked at each other over the dinner table and it's like, I'm really sick of seeing your face. <laughs> I love you, but it's a lot of time together. Um, but we survived it. So all good. Okay. Yes. Jasanka is here and Kim Macon is here. So good morning, everybody. Um, but I'm back, I'm happy, I'm back into things. I was really surprised. I spent all month thinking, oh, when I get home, I can do this, I can do that. And then it took me a good couple of days to get back into the swing of things. But one of the things that I want to show you today, and you're going to hear lots of chair today, because Louise and I are going to be coming in and out of each other's space just because of where I've got everything set up. But today I'm going to our patches and I've done a couple My goodness, <laughs> she has done a couple girls there's more on that side too I oh, know that's something different but I'm loving and we're going to do that in a couple of weeks the double sided and I've resized it for a glasses case for if you're a double pair of glasses person all right um so yes, there are there are a couple here, and Ems has been test stitching a lot of them um, at the last show with me. Um, she did the do what you love, and um, you are spectacular, which I just adore. But lots of different positivity patches, and these are fantastic simply because they are quick to stitch. Mm. They are totally on trend and they're kind of perfect for stitching with the children or the grandchildren sort of a thing. Let me just, um, you know, my snarky G, she wants that one. She wants fries before guys. Um, and it's achievable. It's yes. a nice quick stitch and it's something that kids can be proud of um that was the other one that em stitched and we thought that was just gorgeous right. highly sensitive all right um but um so this is what i'm going to show you how i actually make them because rumors abound um you know oh, you need badge fabric you need and look you do need a different fabric um but, and I bought badge fabric. Fundamentally, badge fabric is buckram. It's stiff, it's oh, porous. It looks like bag fabric. It's not, you could use it for bag fabric. This is actually what um, a lovely friend of mine who, um, who does, or who did, she's passed away now, um, who was a curtain maker and an upholsterer by trade. Oh. She would use buck she would use buckram for um, the clips. 
No, for pelmets. Oh. To make the pelmet that goes around your window treatment. And I'll, I'll get a picture of a pelmet because I didn't know what one was. Oh, I can give you a picture of a pelmet. <laughs> Um, so she would use a, you know, a one piece wooden frame and then she'd cover the fabric in this with, with that underneath it. And it was strong enough, but it was also lightweight and it wasn't dragging everything down. Yeah. Um, so as soon as I saw what badge fabric was, it was that with a fabric on top of it. Mm. So I thought, well, I can do that. So. What I've done, and can I have that piece there, darling? So, what I've done is I've taken my fabric, and for me, in this case, it is just white, 100% cotton, homespun fabric. And I have ironed it onto my, um, Do you want this my buckram. And what that gives us, then is a nice solid square and all I've done then from that is come through and for a little bit of body I still felt like it needed and I've tried I've tried lots of different things I've tried um, putting um, the bag foam behind it mm -hmm. which was quite successful and gives a really nice heavy feel without any weight um, depending on how you're going to use these will really depend on what you want to create it with so for instance on this one and yes I've used I've used a little bit of the um, and I call it stitch and shape because that was what I was I was brought up with and good morning to Michelle as well from down in Seduna in South Australia I hope you're having a wonderful holiday um, but there are some features when you are creating your badges and one of the big ones is um, creating the right stitch around so the stitch that I've got here and I'm just gonna is that going to come through? Still wants to focus on my pinkish hair. No. Um, so what I want to show you is the stitch that I've got around my design. So we're very used to satin stitches. You guys know that I put the outline on my satin stitch. Um, what I want to show you is and let me just come through what I've used is not a satin stitch at all it's what badge makers actually use and it's called a marrow stitch um, so there are actual machines and let me just see if I can come through marrow stitch machine Oh my god. See, that's just too too much effort. Um, so you can look up what a Mero stitch machine um, is, and it's what they do in industrial work. So what I've wanted to do is to come through and capture what that is. So this morning, before we start stitching, because stitching is actually quite quick on this little darling, I want to show you exactly how I've created my marrow stitch and what I've done is I have come through and really drilled down on what a patch looked like um, and then I've come through and I've drawn what the clump of stitches look like. And you can see here, now this is a 14 centimetre hoop. Do not think that my stitching is going to be 14 centimetres. But I always do better starting out larger. So all I'm going to do is come through. And so this is just a drawing that I've made. Um, 
and I'm going to come through and select to digitize an open shape with a single run stitch. At the moment, I really don't care what stitch length because this is going to be four millimeters long before I finish. This is just because I'm too blind to start out smaller than that. Now, and again, we're playing by micro millimeters, but you can see here that I'm going to do a lot of stitches and they're zigzagged up and down. Um, so one down, one up, down, up, down, up. And that is just to ensure that the needle doesn't end up at that exact same spot for all, I think, 14 or 18 stitches. And all I'm going to do, and after you've done the um, the fan, as I like to call it on this, you've then got that little daisy chain that brings it all together. And it's almost like an overlocking stitch. But that, in essence, is our stitch. Now, that's looking a little bit large to go around a patch. So the next thing we do is we reduce its size. Still exactly the same thing, just a whole lot smaller. And height at about 3.8 seems about right and you can go um, like I'm setting this for about a four millimeter height just because I think it needs it around the edge of that badge and then I'm changing my stitch length so the height is 3.8 and my stitch length is four so that and I'm just going to need to alter that a little bit more because I've got one stitch there that's going to be not a satin style stitch. Okay, so you can see that's taken out. So you can see where that is a jump of a stitch, and as soon because it's going on an angle, it's longer. But as soon as I narrow that down just a little bit, the other option would be. To make that a little bit wider. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Mm. So that is our first step. Now that we've got the stitch the way that we like it, we can come through and we can use this stitch to create our own stitch. Um, so I'm going to come through and tell my system to create a motif. I'm going to store it where I store all my other motifs. And I'm calling this Mero 2 because I already have one that I've created. Mm -hmm. Then all I've got to do is enter the start or is create a reference line to show where the design starts and finishes. So now when I come through and create a motif line, it is, um, I can select that mirror stitch. Now, once you've got it that far, you can then come through and a trick that I do when I'm when I am creating these patches, you'll see they all have curved edges. That is an absolute on purpose 
because this stitch goes better around a curved edge than a square edge. The other thing that you can do is just change how close um, those stitches are spaced to give a slightly fuller effect. So if you're looking for just that little bit more um, professionalism in what you're doing with your patches, and I know a lot of you have been asking me about um, creating your own designs and creating your own stitches. So I really did just want to take the time and show you exactly how I have done that. Okay, so now we can come over and look at actual stitching on the machine. So I only got one response to asking whether I should do um, the cactus or the coffee. Can I get you to pass those that white bunch of fabric there to me? Because I think I've made them, no, the entire bunch. Because I've made a mistake there. Okay. And I got the wrong thing out. So that can go back. Okay, so this is my buckram and I just get that from Spotlight. It is in the curtaining department. Okay. Um, I've got my white fabric ironed onto it and I've got my square of stitch and shape. I've got my 10 by 10 hoop and one of the things that I love is that all of these designs do fit into that 10 by 10 hoop. It's nice to be able to use it. I know, we never use it these days, do we? No. And all I'm going to do is lay that fabric on top of that. And the first colorway is going to hold everything down. So I always do that in the same color as I'm going to do the edge stitching with. If I was doing this in with a black top fabric and I was going to do the edging with the black, I'd use a black there. get everything together. I had a lovely thing this week though, um, and I realise it's a little bit of Nepo baby stuff, um, but my sister is the head of teachers at the private college at Sydney, and she's asked me to go Okay, you know that that does not sound good. And let's have a look at why. That's I cool. love those little scissors sitting up there. Yeah, it's a cool one, isn't it? Oh. Did that come with the machine or did you? Uh, no, the magnets do. Because they are, and I'll show you all in a second. Now. Now, having said that, I was playing with my tension this morning because I thought it was a little bit off. But I'm wondering whether my playing has caused more damage. So let's give it a whirl and see what it does. So yes, on Thursday or Friday, I am off to teach a bunch of, um, I think, Year 10 students how to do embroidery. On which school? Uh, up in Sydney at a grammar school. Oh, how lovely. Um, so I'll take my machines up and, um, and yeah, we'll do, a, we'll do a project. Oh, how nice. 
So, how many girls we have? Uh, I think I think Leanne said there was six in the class, which is good because I've only got six machines. Yeah. Um. Okay, and yeah, good morning, Lisa Callum. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Sonia Rook uh, Kodega, thank you for coming in. Lynn Robinson's here as well. I feel I, I did so well yesterday. I was up with Edward at 6.30 just to make sure his ass was going off to work. Um, <laughs> I'm so sick of having people around my house. Um, but last night I fell into a really good book. And it was 2.30. Oh, no. So, um... You had a long day yesterday. So, um, this morning was not fun. Um, that's looking better, though. Okay, so, what Louise was commenting on... Let me just see if I can bring up... Is where I've got my scissors up here. Um... And what it is, is it's three magnet holding spots that are just perfect. Whoops. Learn to love it when you don't put the lid on something. But what they're actually for is instead of putting all of the stitch guides, because there's just so, so many, what they want you to do is when you choose the one that you want, is to actually then... Oh, put those in. So I think that's kind of cool too. Yeah. Um, but I had so much fun. I did. Um, I did for the camera. So I put these back in place. Ten, nine, eight. I love the fact that there's a little kangaroo there. Oh right. But Cameron is such a dinosaur kind of a kid. Still. Still. It's. Yeah, it, it's just his, like, one holdover from, from, childhood. from childhood sort of thing. Um, so, I went through, and I'll see if I just get the sample. I went through and I've stitched on one inch web because <laughs> he was complaining that he's he snapped a pea bomb yeah. and he wanted one that was stronger so I made him one that was stronger but how cute is that loving the quality of the stitching that just hasn't shown really through at all there on the back yeah um, and um, and all I did. And he's going to use it at work. Oh, he uses it at work. He's got his yeah. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> and there's so few things that he actually lets me do for him. Yeah. So this was just a you know chuffed mummy sort of a thing. But. Ray Smith, good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. This is what I wanted to show you. So the way I did it was I fed, I used my magna pins as guides. Oh, okay. So that, because if you've ever, when you stitch on webbing, it is really, really easy. 
for the webbing to attempt to move. So I lined it up and it sat beautifully underneath there, those edges there. And it just guided it perfectly so that all of my stitches were in the middle of that webbing. Well, that's, an, that's even good for anything that you're trying to stitch straight. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Um, so no, just, just love it how well that came out as, you know, yeah. as using it as a guideline. But I have trouble getting um, any embroidery to stitch evenly. Yeah. Um, On anything. Oh, edges or anything, yeah. Yeah, it's always um, uneven. Well, and I have, I was the biggest um, naysayer years ago, before I knew better, before I'd spoken to um, technicians, etc., about not putting a magnet near the bottom of the machine here. I was the biggest naysayer. And, you know, God bless me for opening my mouth before I really knew what I was talking about. Um, yeah. Then when they bought out magnetic hoops, I thought, okay, so there's got to be something here. And that's when I started doing the research and talking to the technicians and the brands over the fact that, no, it's okay. Like, it's... It's okay to put it down there, just not up near the computer. Well, and, and even so, like, and one technician was telling me, A, that it would have to rip out my filaments before it was going to do any damage, and B, the comment that was made was, you think about it, Back in the olden days of the 90s, people used to put magnets on the side of their computer boxes. And I thought, yeah, I was that person. I used to decorate my computer box at work. Really? Yeah. Where, and what they mean is industrial magnets. Um, oh, okay. Now, I'm still careful about, you know, I'm certainly not gonna put magnets near my screen. But, yeah, um, so I thought that was really interesting. Light's gone off this sewing machine. Yes, because that makes it easier for, the, for everybody else to see. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's no one home on my lights. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh, Ray, you've been in Bali for two weeks. Oh, lucky ducky. Well, no, we got home. Kids were all alive. The worst, the worst thing that happened, and I think I mentioned it online, was um, as the kids call, um, what do we do if the dishwasher floods? And my answer was dishes, um, <laughs> which is fine while I'm away. But you know, if I'm at home, I want a dishwasher. <laughs> so, and what it was like, it would spend a day and a half trying to fix it, um, and he possibly will fix it. So he's just gonna bought a you know, crappy one, but. Bloody house mascot, the mouse. Oh. I swear to God, it's like a pet. We just can't get rid of the damn thing. Um, chewed through the cables and the water pipes. Oh my goodness. Um, so, um, what can you do? Exactly. So Edward will have a go at replacing it because he hates the idea of throwing something out. But um, yes, other than that. <coughs> now, if you are going to have a go at digitising your own um, patches, the other thing that I will tell you to be really careful of is what size stitching you use. You've got to be really careful on what size font. 
And that means a lot of the time that you can't use a lot of the decorative fonts because they're just so small. Like you need the smallest of the fonts to go into that. Mm. Yeah. Now, if you're going to make these and you're going to put them on the back of yep. um, denim jackets. Yes. Can you sew them straight onto the jacket? You jacket's? sure can. So, if you're going to sew them straight onto a jacket, mm -hmm. do you need then to have this thick stuff? Yes. You still need the support. If you look at a badge that you would buy, it's actually quite a solid... Yes, but can you then... But what I'm asking, why could you not use this as an applicator? Oh! Yes, yes, you could. Absolutely. Sorry, I was thinking around a different question. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you can use that as an applique. I, uh, the only thing I would do, I might then do an extra set of stitching around the edge. Would be my only, would be my only. Thing. Okay. I, I want to make for my um, grand nieces to they each get a denim jacket and I oh, saw your picture with the, with the four yeah. of them down the back. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, that would be really nice. Doing well with the smaller people. Yeah. Trust you for fiddling with your tension. I know. Okay, now, I'm just wondering whether... Now, this is the other thing that I quite love as well. Keep your eye on this. Oh, how cute is that? Because I was at least smart enough to pull it out. And you've got a new one you can put in. Um, well, when I was playing around, I'd had... Because you're never quite sure. And it's one of those things you really can hear when, you know, and I always say it's like when your baby cries versus somebody else's baby. Yeah. asking how do you prevent misalignment of the design with the edge so with the like push pull compensation okay fantastic question Susan what um, a lot of that depends on what software you're working with and I'll show you what I mean that. so if I bring up my design here in the settings for my design I've got and I'm just looking for for where it's set okay so in the settings for my design I have pull compensation set at a standard 0.2 of a millimetre. Um, and pull compensation is really all about the direction that your machine is stitching in and the fact that stitching sucks up. 
our um, our designs. So if we look here, the pink stitching is going on this angle, so it's going to suck up more in this direction, which means we have to compensate and have that a little bit larger. Most embroidery software will have will allow you to set your compensation. If you are using um, Janome Digitizer, which is now probably about three or four years old, um, Hatch, Wilcom or Benina, you can go through the Manage Your Auto Fabrics and your settings and you can change your pull compensation depending on the type of design you are doing. So for instance, um, when I do lace, I have a different, and I'm just wondering whether my lace one is here. My lace one is normally 0.15 because I just don't need that heavy, um, heavier pull compensation. And so that's a standard setting. The other thing that you would want to be doing is um, coming through and um, test sewing. So the bigger the design, the more chance of misalignment there is. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I like that these guys are small designs. Mm. Have they been popular at the shows? Um, look, the shows are really weird at the moment. Yeah. Um, it's it's a very strange sort of show market out there. Um, not as popular as it, as I'd expected. I did have one person at the last show in Canberra who came to do it and it just so happened that she like did 15 stitches and um, I think it was the um, the machine had needed a service because it was out of alignment and it was just such a sort of horror show that um, that she was too scared to continue. <laughs> Yeah, when that one happened. I hope it didn't put off the whole embroidery mm. issue. And for me, when I was designing these, it's all about getting as much detail in as I can. Yeah. While still keeping it simple. Exactly. I'm sorry. Like it's amazing how embroidery designs have changed. Like you've been doing this longer than I have. Mm. Um, but just how, like, remember when we started and every design was a full, deep design. Like you think back to the Mrs. Mouses. Like you know, um, you know, when Louise and I started, the applique was rare. Like the rare. idea of doing applique with your embroidery machine. That's kind of just stupid. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was embroidery, embroidery, embroidery. <coughs> um. I 
talking about it the other day. What's the biggest fib you were ever told or mis misguided you were ever given about your embroidery machine? Oh, that it was going to be easy. <laughs> it's a good one. Mm. It was going to be easy. It's, it's that one of the hardest things I've had to learn. I was getting really snarky at um, at the Canberra show with the number of people coming up and telling me I was cheating. Um, and, you know, Louise, you and I have had this, dis this discussion a lot. Um, to the point of I started... Um, I started going back um, or pushing back and I asked them whether they used a treadle and whether they used the old ringer washing machine. Yeah. Because um, I'm just... and I've never had anyone say I, I, I'm cheating because I've always explained how difficult it yeah. is to use it. Oh, no, the number of people while I'm even sitting there teaching, oh, that's cheating. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, so then I was really excited when I found on um, um, on the Machinery Mile, which is this place, and I'm sure somebody's going to pop up and tell me exactly where it is, um, in Outback somewhere, um, it's a, quite honestly, it is a mile of machinery. And I found, and I did actually post, um, the old, and I can remember my grandmother had this. My mother had one of those. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, yeah it was to me it was the coolest thing at Machinery Mile um, to Edward not so much but you know um, but my parents talk about having a, co a copper and a oh yeah yeah I don't remember I don't remember the copper and the kerosene fridge um, but yeah one of, one of the things I love, and, and we were only laughing about it um, while we were away. I don't know whether we'd watched something one night or I don't know how it came up. But we were talking about how um, things that, like, you know, when, when we were children, when I was a child and I'm 50, um, you know, the only choice was cloth nappies. There wasn't another choice. And apparently, I was talking to the young girl across the road. Oh, cloth nappies are in. Are coming back in because people can't afford to buy the disposables. I made my children. So we're talking, you know, 19 years now. Camo's 19 in August. Um, I made shaped cloth nappies. I went and bought a pattern. Um, and I had two dozen shaped cloth nappies. I had my nappy pail with my nappy sand. And it was only an extra load of washing a week. Like, um, but as soon as my mother visited, like the first thing, because um, we lived in Melbourne at the time, um, if I visited mum, there was a packet of, um, of huggies there because, you know, she's not changing any kid with cloth nappies. Um, and if she came down, for the week that she visited, he wore he wore disposables <laughs> that she bought, um, and and we were laughing at that just as a you know it's who she was it's whatever. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Six years and six months of watching cloth nappies. Oh my god. Okay, Jasanka, I'm feeling pretty good here about um, getting all of my children out of the way in 16 months. Three kids, 16 months, job done. Um, <laughs> Right, because there's only 16 months between Cameron and the twins. Yeah, yeah. Um, so did you get your kids tra trained out of nappies pretty quickly too? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, 
I very conveniently travelled to America when my children needed toilet training and my sister-in-law toilet trained them by the time I come back. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I'm not saying that this makes me a good person. I'm saying it makes me a very, very lucky person. <laughs> wow. She was determined for you. She was, and she was determined to win. And, um, oh, look at that, though, for good timing. There's a knot straight on that that would have really stuffed things up. You just happened to spot it. Um, well, and it just so happened to be at the right place. Oh, you've just finished. Oh, yeah. how good's that? Um... No, and I can remember reading all these toilet training things on, you know, toilet training your kid from birth and all of this. And God, it seemed like a lot of effort. <laughs> God bless to those who do. Um, but they've survived. They're okay. Oh, Kim's favourite. You only have to push a button and change colours. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. And you only have to turn the oven on and, you know, whatever you stick in there cooks perfectly. Yeah. Oh, I cooked this week too. Um, shows that I really missed, what I really missed being away. Um, I have made for the first time vanilla slice. Oh, okay. Um, it and it worked. Oh, good. It worked really well. And then I found I had sort of three leftover egg whites. So I thought, oh, what the hell am I going to do? And does anybody remember the good old... Pavlova. No, no, didn't do a pav. Did, um, my mother used to do meringue with extra vanilla and cornflakes, little biscuits. And, and it was, I don't know, it must have been a Woman's Weekly from the 70s sort of thing. I don't know how you missed that one, Louise. Oh, um, I've got the book from it. Because <laughs> most of Mum's recipes came from the Woman's Weekly. Um, and um, so, yeah, I did I did that. And... Um, they were delicious. Well, I had one straight out of the oven and it was lovely. Edward came home an hour later and said, oh, gee, that would look good. I might take them for morning tea tomorrow. Packed up the all of them. <laughs> Nobody got any more. Nobody got any more, but the people at work are going to be happy. Um, all right. Whoops. No. Must have hit a lot. And Kathy, I'm loving what you've um, what you've written there. This class is really making me appreciate digitizers. <laughs> well, because one of the things I've been focusing on this year is writing a digitizing manual. I just and you know I'm always happy to answer questions, but I just wanted to show you, um, you know, a that it's possible, and b what goes into it. like stitching out an old uh, design yesterday um, and actually while we're here I'll show you let's see if I go because it's got a couple of bits to okay so I've been making Christmas pop holders so I've got my little snowman face and oh nice! I've got my whoops today's reindeer face. Um, so I thought this could be a fun one for Christmas in July. And what I thought I would do is show you exactly how I come through and cut up that design, which is exactly the same design as the face of Christmas that we used for. Um, for doing the placements. Um, so cute. And 
I thought they're probably not a bad idea. I could very easily pop a shortbread piece into that, mm. like a shortbread round, and there's my Christmas present for each work people. Yeah. Um, so that is Do you going. Get a present back from me. Um. Sometimes. Look, he does. He'll he'll get a bottle of wine, or he'll get. But and you know, look, that's not the reason. You know, and, like. No. Um. It's the same as I was always very conscious of doing the Christmas gifts for the teachers. Um, and my mother, like, you know, and we were, I was a child in the 70s and 80s. Um, so for primary school, it was always like a pack and a hand gifts for the teacher. Yeah. Um, when I did it, I did the teacher, I did a cushion with the teacher's name, the year, and the name of all the students. Oh, that was nice. Um, and it, it became a little bit of a joke in the primary school that the, the vice principal never got one. Um, and they were very helpful to me. They were, you know, we went through a lot with um, with getting Emsies, um different things etc so the last year I was there I got the staff list and I made the vice principal a cushion with all the staff's name oh okay um, I didn't do it for high school like the kids the kids would choose mm. or had the option to choose like a teacher or a couple of teachers that they might want to give something to and we would do the shortbread wrapped in the tea towel uh, in the Christmas tea towel of course Okay, so we are now up to the last set of colours. And I've just realised I've made one small mistake and tried to do that too early. So I'm going to go back to the colour that I want to use. For me, going to be white. Now, because there is a chance that we've had some sucking in, and you can see how fluted the edges are here, because the stitches are trying to suck that in. So now we're going to do another outline, and this is all part of the design. It's part of the color guide, and that's going to show you just how much sucking in has occurred. Well, I didn't think that you might suck me with all that stiff stuff. It's amazing. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's not too bad, but it's there. And I'll show this just to show you guys. So you can see here, the inner line is the first line, and like it's about a millimetre, millimetre and a half. Mm. On this side, it's just that little bit more, but it's worth doing because this is what gives you the better results. Now, you guys know how much I love my squeezies, and my squeezies are fantastic. This buckram is a bugger to cut. These are heavier scissors. And even though it's going to take me twice the amount of time. And didn't do Emma do a wonderful job of doing these at the show? Oh, she did. I do like my long ones. Yeah, they're very good, those ones, aren't they? It is amazing how you can have a different pair of scissors for each different job. I know, and it seems so ridiculous. 
but you kind of got it. Mm. And you understand how surgeons have all those different tools for each different. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm really surprised at the things Cameron has to take in to bakery school. Like, he has to take his own kitchen scales every week. All right. So what kind of bakery is he doing? Um... Not patisserie, just like bread baking. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't realise he was doing a bakery school. Okay, so once that's taken off, I can come around and see that maybe I just didn't get that quite as much as I would have liked. And then we're going to start and marrow stitch. Um, so I'm going to do, like last year when I did the case for my scissors, I'm going to make him a case for um, the tools that he needs because he's like it's a thermometer. It's a, um, and we've got Heather Elrich with us as well. Hi Heather, thank you for joining us. Um, so he's going to take his own thermometer, like as well as his knife set, his own um, set of thermometers, his own um, scales, like, yeah, all the... So I'm going to make him a kit that'll hold and protect. Yeah. So using that foam board that I yeah. used, yeah. So I just need him to actually grab the... Um, or give me the tools so that I can do it. Yeah. Um, Make it in dinosaur fabric? Do not. Well, I was actually thinking of doing it in leather. Oh, okay. Just really, you know, take it to the next. Um, okay, actually, that's the other one while it's going around that one, you know, is... So the other thing that I've made this week okay so the other thing that I've made this week is this lunchbox or makeup bag so I quilted the fabric because it wasn't strong enough to hold itself up but look at how nice and wide that is a little bit small for what I'd like a lunchbox to be um, so I've altered the pattern but check out that gorgeous heavy hardware and just as a carry bag yeah what do you reckon of that one yeah I like it um, so you know it's amazing how brown this fabric looks the other thing that I thought was a really cool idea I know that the lining fabric doesn't perfectly match what you would think of a Doctor Who. Yeah. However, there is a reason for my madness. I wanted a wipeable fabric. And I wanted something that was slightly waterproof. So I went to Kmart and I bought the plainest, unfortunately this was the plainest, um, $11 shower curtain. Oh. And I've now got lining for about a hundred bags. <laughs> but it's a good size, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So in a month or so, um, I forget, I'm, I'm getting together all the dates and everything at the moment um, and putting up new classes, but we will do... So the concept of that one is quilting for a project. So using our continuous edge-to-edge -edge quilting um, and how to manage and look at exactly what we need to do then for that to be used on a project. I love the hard I'm 
really well, isn't it? It did. Is the pattern mine? Um, yes and no, Ray. Um, I actually got the idea of, and I'll show you exactly where I got the idea from. Um, uh, let's see. And Marie Bell. Good morning from Tweed Heads. Good morning, Marie. Okay, so my good friends at YouTube here. Uh, um, so this is the initial bag that I had looked at from Sewing Times. I didn't like how some of it was put together and I've seen this in about five different places. Um, so, but what I did like, oops, it is, um, damn, but they chuck the ads in on these. Three, two, one, go. Okay. So this was the initial bag that I'd looked at, um, but it wasn't lined. It just had a layer of, um, of insulation. Um, and that kind of didn't work and it didn't look pretty on the edges as far as I believe. So I wanted to alter that. Um, but I did take the measurements off and, um, and I've changed a couple of other little um, little measurements around the way as well. And I'm doing a larger version. It won't be something that I am um, selling, but I will be showing you how I've made the pattern itself. Um, and look, YouTube has some really good things. I mean, hell, I'm on there. Um, <laughs> Okay, so what we've now got is a lovely little design. Now I do just have that to trim. And just get rid of those Furbies. Any stitching that wasn't quite perfect you can just trim up there but I think that is a really cool mm. little patch okay so that is our positivity patches um you'll see next week i am going to play with felt and show you how i created a no sew felt box so these are the boxes that you can make any size um i got started on this last year after i bought the truckster um and my car doesn't have any um What's that arm compartment that you have in there that we get used to? You know that centre console? Yes. It doesn't have that. Oh, what a pain. Exactly. So there's nowhere to put your glasses. There's nowhere to put your hand. Like, just, yes. yeah. So I made my own and I did it in felt. Um, it's all, they're also great for the, um, for making boxes to go in these um, cube, mm -hmm. um, sections as well so that's going to be um 
what we do next week the other change coming is from next week we're not going to be doing Tuesday classes it's going to be Thursday evening and Sunday afternoon um, and this is just in you know lives are changing um, so many of us are working through um, through the week and I wanted to take that into consideration um, as always you can watch these whenever you wish um, so we will be doing this again on Thursday evening um, Kathy fantastic question will you be doing any sewing retreats um, keep watching and um, we will be um, I'll pop up some options of which design you might like me to stitch out on um, on Thursday evening and you guys can choose until then have a stitching day guys bye